Hey guys, it's Luke, this is Motor Minds, and today I am driving the 2017 Mazda CX-5. Now this car was completely redesigned by Mazda, and I think that it just might be one of the best crossovers out there. Now you've probably heard me say that a lot, and that's because a lot of the crossovers in the segment are pretty damn similar. But this Mazda really, really works hard to separate itself from the competition and appeal to the sportier, more athletic, more fun, soulful driver. And I think this car does that very well. So recently Mazda's been trying to reinvent its brand name. So it's a Japanese brand and it's always been more of an entry level brand, kind of like Toyota or Honda, for instance. But now what they're trying to do is not exactly compete with Mercedes, BMW, and Audi, but become like a mid-tier. Like, they're better than Honda and Toyota, but they're not quite Mercedes, Audi, or BMW levels of quality. And they've been doing a very good job at that recently with their cars, and you can see that in the new CX-5. Let's take a look at the exterior to start. The front end, way more aggressive, but at the same time a lot classier. There's a nice use of chrome trim around the black mesh grill and I love the way that the trim flows into the front headlamps and it matches really well and God, those headlamps they're toned they're sleek and they have great lines that flow into the sides of the car and they're pulled really thin to give it a more aggressive low stance that you don't really get with an SUV normally and I love the way the hood kind of points out over the rest of the front bumper it gives it more of like a poised arrow straight look that I think looks awesome. It looks it look, makes it look very, very athletic, especially on the front end. And I also love the way that the fog lamps are designed. They look really small and they're kind of implemented into this piece of dark trim on the lower end of the bumper. It looks really, really sweet. Now, moving along to the sides of the CX-5, it looks a lot more like the previous generation did. The doors, the door handles, they all look very similar. Not a whole lot going on. There are a couple of lines that are really cool one line starts off in the front of the car goes through the doors and then dies off in the rear passenger door and is then picked up by another line that sweeps into the rear and matches up with the rear tail lamps and those rear tail lamps they're typical mazda very similar to the ones you'd see on the mazda 3 mazda 6 and the cx9 they're very similar and the rear is a little bit bubblier than i would have liked i thought it would be cool if they had a more aggressive looking rear end to kind of go with the rest of the car it does look a lot like the old cx5 just with smaller sleeker tail lights but i mean it's a very good looking car i must say it's probably one of the best crossovers you can buy if you're going based off of the visual appeal i think this car looks awesome especially compared to the old cx5 now let's talk power now you you may be thinking oh if they're trying to appeal to a more upscale luxury kind of market they might go with a more high-end powertrain and you would be wrong it's the same two and a half liter sky active engine that you see in a lot of mazda products like the mazda 6 and whatnot and it puts out 187 horsepower and 185 pound feet of torque and i just think that that is not quite competitive enough. I mean, it works out well with base entry-level um, SUVs in crossovers because those are four cylinders generally putting out the same amount of power, but the fact that they don't offer a higher-end engine kind of disappoints me. I mean, if you do think about it, some of the other competitors don't necessarily offer super high-end uh, sporty engines, but if Mazda's trying to up their game and compete more as a luxury upper scale brand, they should probably think about implementing a more powerful, more refined engine. I mean, this engine gets the job done well paired with the automatic transmission we have here. It does zero to 60 in about eight seconds, which is fine, but it's definitely not class leading. And I feel like they might want to implement a better engine. Now they do have a new turbocharged engine that is um, that the engine that they use in the CX-9, they recently started putting that in the Mazda 6 and maybe they will do that with this car. And I think that would make a lot of sense for Mazda to do that. Now this transmission, it's not a CVT or anything, it's a conventional automatic, but it's very, very sporty. It shifts so quick and it also 
is very quick to downshift, which is something that you don't see in a lot of these modern transmissions. A lot of the times they'll hold gears as long as humanly possible, just begging for that extra MPG. And this transmission, they're just like, screw that. We want to be sporty. We want to be more soulful. So you even look at the gas pedal and it downshifts. And that is fun to a certain extent, but sometimes it gets kind of annoying because I'll just want to accelerate a little bit and then the engine, I mean the transmission will pop down a gear and you will be just going way too quick. It'll be revving the engine too hard. It's a little bit unsettling sometimes when you're just trying to cruise around when the transmission pops up so quick, but it's really not that big of a deal. I think the thing that irritates me the most of this transmission is the fact that it doesn't shift up necessarily quick enough. I love how it downshifts quickly, but they should replicate that with the upshifts because it'll hold a gear far too long sometimes, not even in sport mode. And I'll be going down a hill, I won't need to have my foot on the gas, and it'll be screaming along at like 3,000 RPM, and it'll take a long time to figure out, hey, I should probably shift up. And that does get annoying. Now, you do have a sport mode with this car, and if you flick that sport mode button, basically what happens is the transmission decides, you know what, I'm gonna redline every single gear change. I was driving it, and I was in sport mode, and I accelerated up to about 5,000 RPM, then let off the gas thinking it would shift. No, it just sat at five grand. I was like, it'll shift. It didn't shift. So I ended up having to give it more gas to rev it out to redline in order to get the thing to shift. And I thought that was kind of funny. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, in terms of a sport mode, it really does do something. It holds those gears out long for sporty driving, but I think it might be just a little bit over the top. You guys can let me know what you think of that. But overall, the powertrain works out well, gets 23 city, 29 highway with the four wheel drive system we have in this car, which is pretty decent for a four wheel drive car. Not quite as good as the Honda CRV, but still not bad at all. Now let's talk about the way the CX-5 drives. Now, as like I'm saying, Mazda's trying to compete with more upper end brands, this car better drive pretty well. And it does. I'm very, very pleased to announce that. Mazda's always been about more of a sporty, soulful driving experience. And this car handles really freaking well. For a 3,600 pound SUV, this thing will take some turns. There is not a lot of body roll. The steering feel is really, really well weighted. I am very impressed with the way that the steering feels. It's just awesome. It dials up the weight very nicely as you go into turns. But when you just drive around town, it's not overly heavy. Now, it is electric power steering. I mean, you know the spiel. Oh, it's not as communicative. Yeah, get over it. I mean, that's basically the way it is. Sorry to say. This car does actually feel really well, especially considering the electric power steering. And the steering wheel's leather wrap feels really good in your hands, and all that is great. Now, the one thing is, Despite how well this car may corner and handle, it's very hard to hide the fact that you're lugging around a 3,600 pound pile of metal. Now, especially when you have an SUV that has a high center of gravity, that weight becomes more apparent, especially when you're pushing it through turns. While you may have very little body roll and very precise steering, you still feel that weight transfer and that does take away from your confidence. But the thing is you're gonna get that in most SUVs that aren't super high performance, like a KN GTS or something. Like you're going to feel the weight and the high center of gravity. And the fact that Mazda made this car drive as good as it does, despite all those things, is really remarkable. It handles really, really, really well. So, now that we've talked about power and handling, let's talk about the things that you guys probably care about the most, which would be the interior. Now, a lot of these cars, their interiors are a bit too utilitarian and really aren't all that nice on the whole, but this car, oh my God, did they change that. This interior feels way, way more upscale than any of its competitors from Honda, Toyota, or any of those guys. This is definitely where Mazda's made the most strides to compete as a luxury brand. You look here, there's real stitching on the dashboard, soft touch dash. You have these nice chrome accents around the air vents running along the panel here that has the faux wood trim, which is beautiful. This very nice ash wood trim looks awesome. Like I said, leather up steering wheel, you have stitched leather on the door panels. You have contrast stitching on the lower end of the door panel to match the brown stitching on the seats. You also have more of that um, wood and aluminum bonded together. It looks 
awesome. It is such a tasteful, stylish interior, and it really, really almost looks like it could comp compete with Mercedes or Audi. I could honestly see this as an Audi interior. It is really, really well built, really well made, fit and finish is awesome. Now, there are a few letdowns. The first one, I would say, is the center screen. It's seven inches, and it's mounted high. Graphics are really good, but I just think for the class, it should have a bigger screen. And I just, I mean, the screen logic is pretty good. You have a very nice tactile rotary knob down here to control everything, which works great. And it's not too unintuitive to use, but I just think a nice, simple, straightforward touchscreen would work a lot better than this system does. However, this system is really not that bad. You do have navigation. You have a really nice 10-speaker Bose audio system that you can get in this uh, model here. But, I mean, it is very, very well equipped on the whole. This car costs 32 grand, and I've got heated seats, I have a power moonroof, I have an electronic parking brake. Now, there is one little issue with the way that this Mazda is spec'd. Now, this is the Grand Select, and it stickers at about $32,600. Now, you can get a Grand Tour for not that much more money. That Grand Touring is a much better car just because of how it's equipped. Now this car, yeah, you do get blind spot monitoring, you do have the Bose audio and all that good stuff, you have leather, leather seats and all that, but if you just pay a little bit more money for the Grand Touring, you get adaptive cruise control, you get the heads up display, you get a much nicer center gauge cluster. It's the same generic layout, but the screen all the way to the right that shows like your fuel economy and all your trip computer stuff. The graphics are a lot better in the higher end version and it's a lot nicer to use. You can get a panor panoramic moonroof and you can get really nice white leather seats that I think just look absolutely epic in that car. Now, I understand why they have the Grand Select. It's supposed to combine as many of the Grand Touring's features um, that people really want at a lower price. However, that just doesn't add up on the whole because you might as well, once you spec out the Grand Select the way you'd want it, you might as well have just paid the little bit extra money and gotten that Grand Touring. At least that's my opinion. I mean, you can get a Grand Touring for about 34 grand. This car is about 32. A couple grand more and you get all those extra features. I think it might be worth it. So let's talk about the personality of the CX-5. Now, I think the CX-5 has one hell of a personality because it appeals to the driver within us all. You've gone out, you've bought your crossover, but damn, I'm not gonna give up my driving pleasure. And that's what the CX-5 says. It's calling out to those guys that they need to go just make the sacrifice for this family, get the five-seater crossover, do their duty for the family. So you go out and you do that, but you're still rewarded with a car that has a decent engine though. It handles really well, has this really up-class interior, and I think that's where this Mazda is gonna separate itself. It appeals to people. It has soul, it has passion, as the things that Mazda markets. It's not just marketing BS, it's legit stuff. And I think that's why this car is gonna appeal so well. As always, I hope you enjoyed the review and tune into Motor Minds for future car reviews and car-related video content.